Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the Tract and Truth Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Those terms, Tract and Truth, are the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast, and it's Tuesday. So welcome to the broadcast. We use those terms for a very clear reason. We open God's Word, study God's Word each and every day, but on our Tuesday broadcast, we give ourselves over to a more explicit discussion of using gospel tracts, sharing the gospel, sharpening ourselves as gospel tellers, and that's our focus on our Tuesday broadcast, thus the term tract and truth. Tracks, obviously, the gospel tool. I'll mention some of those here in a moment. Truth, obviously, is the gospel truth. Today's broadcast will be a little bit different. And the key term for today is this, a half a million. A half a million. I'll explain something about that in a moment. For today's broadcast, my Bible is sitting open to some familiar verses here in Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, if you can turn there, do so right now. We're going to highlight a couple of verses there. Isaiah chapter 55. Have pen and paper ready so that you can jot down how to contact us. We want to put into your hand, as my announcer said, we want to put into your hand a sample pack out of our gospel tracks. I want to tell you about one of those tracks in particular. It's entitled, What About Eternal Life? I'll say something there about the track in a moment, but let me lead into our half a million discussion this way. As I said, I hope you're familiar with Isaiah chapter 55, our passage for today. There is in this chapter a number of familiar and often used Bible verses. One of the verses says this, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Uh, That's a verse worth pondering and preaching in and of itself. Another verse in Isaiah 55 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Both of these verses are an open invitation to any and to all to come to God and to have their spiritual thirst quenched. By talking about their spiritual thirst, we're dealing with the fact they need a Savior from sin. These verses are open invitations to sinners to be saved. But there are two other verses I want to read here today. These verses openly, boldly, very unashamedly declare that the power and the potential of God's word is there for us to be used and put put into use. I want to use today's broadcast to highlight the power and the potential of God's word. And as I said, today, my key phrase, is this, a half a million. I'm going to explain that term here for you in just a moment. Before I read some verses out of Isaiah chapter 55, I want to talk to you about this tract entitled, What About Eternal Life? Part of this tract says this, eternal life does not mean everlasting existence. All have that, including the devil, demons, and fallen angels. You do not have eternal life unless you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, but you do have endless existence, which means you will live on forever in either heaven or in hell. Now, friend, that's a very, very key statement. You do have a sort of eternal kind of a life. You will have an eternal existence, but the issue is where? Unless you have the eternal life, God's life, that you get as a gift from God himself through his son, Jesus Christ, without eternal life from God, your eternal existence will be in the lake of fire. Now, that's a pretty blunt, awful statement. And dear friend, God does not want you to go there. He is not willing that any should perish. He wants all to come to repentance and salvation. 
To do that, though, you're going to have to bow your proud and sinful heart before God and cry out to him for mercy and grace and pardon. And he will abundantly pardon you through the shed blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary. This gospel tract what about eternal life is a tremendous tool to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to people that you will not have perhaps the opportunity to verbally tell the gospel. Please let me send you this tract. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give to you three ways by which you can give to me your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, a free sample packet containing about 42 tracks will come to you. Again, it's free. This one, What About Eternal Life, will be in there. You can then look at the tracks and say, hey, I like certain ones here. I want to get more of those. Wonderful. We'd love to send them to you. Free. We can do that because God has faithfully helped us through his people. So let me please give you this gospel tract and the sample packet. If you can't wait to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, Isaiah 55, beginning at verse 8, here's what the Bible says. For my, talking about God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may But seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. We're going to stop right there. Let me not leave you hanging about that one half million number there. Last month at our semi-annual board meeting of Bible Tracks Incorporated, we got a chance to take a very small look at the last 14 years of ministry. I came to Bible Tracks in May of 2004 to be the director. And over these 14 years, God has allowed us to strengthen the work. Now, the work of Bible Tracks was already 66 years old when I arrived. We're 80 years old this year. It already had a tremendous history long before I came. It had a godly, powerful founder in a man called Dr. Paul Levine. But did God want this ministry to just simply keep on telling what God had done for 66 years in the past? Or did God have some new chapters for us to write? Well, our board members believe that our Savior God is also not just simply the God of the past, but the God of the present and the God of the future. So as the discussion was had at that board meeting, we came away with the figure of a half a million. Now, over the last 14 years, our best and, listen to me, very, very, very conservative number of how many people have received Christ after receiving one of our gospel tracts is a half a million people. And again, that's a conservative number. Praise be to God. Now, does Mark Smith and the board of Bible Tracks get the honors for all this? Are you kidding me? Not at all. First of all, printing the tracks does nothing at all unless they are handed out. Over these 14 years, gospel-preaching churches, gospel-believing people have faithfully given out our tracts. And by the way, we're not the only good gospel tract organization, but faithful churches and people gave out our tracts. They did the work of sowing the seed, and to be sure, they deserve some of the honor for the faithful service to Christ. But you and I both know ultimately all the praise, all the honor must go to God. Handing out a piece of paper is foolish unless those papers contain the Word of God. Here in Isaiah 55, verse 11 describes that word as the word that goeth out of God's mouth. The power of God's spoken voice is known. We can read about it in the book of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there be, and there was. God created all things. Well, that same power is found in the Word of God we call the Bible. 
the 11th verse there in Isaiah 55 says that God's word cannot, it just can't return void. It can't return empty. It cannot go out and accomplish nothing. It will accomplish those things that please God. Now, once again, uh, last week I had a pastor ask me that age old question. And the question is this, Brother Mark, do gospel tracks still work? <laughs> well, if you've been listening to the program very long, you already know my stock answer. Here it is. I told the pastor, well, not at your church they don't. Well, the pastor then looked at me with a questioning uh, look on his face. Then I went on to say this, that you asked me the question tells me that you personally do not use gospel tracts. And if you, as the pastor of the church, do not use gospel tracts, then I'm pretty well sure that the people of your church don't use gospel tracts either. Then I told him about the half a million souls who'd been saved over the last 14 years through gospel tracts. He quickly said, that's really only happening in other countries, isn't it? Tracts really are not that effective in the United States of America, are they? Oh, friend, may I politely say, may I politely say what I, to you, what I said to him, I said, pastor, that's a rather foolish question. I then gave him a series of stories of people coming to know Jesus Christ here in the United States of America. And I then asked him to let me please come and share with his church family about using gospel tracts. The sad truth is he said, let me think about it. Now, you know why that happened? And I challenged the pastor on this. I said, Pastor, if I come and share about gospel tracts, then you are going to have to confront either using them or turning away from a powerful evangelism tool. And Pastor, are you ready to use gospel tracts? The discussion didn't go on much farther after that. Oh, beloved, please know this, that right now, as you are hearing this broadcast on the other side of the world, 1 million, 3, 1.3 million gospel tracts are right now being used in the country of Pakistan. They were printed in the month of May, and a major summer outreach is going on there. Thousands of pounds, thousands of people have been saved there over the last eight years. Please pray for them. But at the same time, this summer, there are outreaches going on in India, in Africa, in South America, in Cuba, plus in Montana, in Minnesota, and Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and all kinds of other states. God's word has power to impact the souls of men. It is impossible for it to do be otherwise. Please help us write the next chapters of salvation stories by getting our tracks and giving them out. Until Jesus comes, he's going to save sinners, even in your town, even in my town, and by using you and me. Please, my announcer is going to give the contact information. Give us your name and address. Let me send you those gospel tracks. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.